Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you again on Monday, May 29th. Happy Memorial Day. And today we are covering a question that's floating around the investment community of whether Bitcoin is a bubble or not. If you've been following the Bitcoin market this year, you've seen some stunning rises. I think it started the year around $700. Recently it was up around $2,800 or $2,900 before dropping about $600. Bucks. Uh, I don't think it went below 2000 but it was uh, 21 2200 over the past couple days. And Which, of course, people are wondering, is it a bubble? Is this something that's going to keep going or has it hit its peak already and is about to collapse and people are going to get smoked? Well, my short answer, again, this is my opinion. As always, I encourage you to do your own research. But personally, I don't think that it is a bubble. And there's a couple of reasons why. First of all, is that I wonder if you asked 100 people at random how many people actually own a Bitcoin, let alone even know what Bitcoin is, but I would guess it's, it's well south of 1%, maybe even a tenth of a percent. So, again, when you have a bubble, that's, you know, we're talking about a mania caused by just everyone out of left field piling into something that they know nothing about. You're going to get your coffee or in the cab ride and, and someone's giving you advice and everyone is just piling in, which... If, if nobody owns one or if a very small percentage of people actually own one, by nature that, to me, makes it seem difficult for it to be a bubble. Now, can the price go a lot lower? Yes. Uh, and certainly if you're about to invest in Bitcoin, I think you should be prepared for that. I would imagine we're going to continue to see wild volatility, wild swings, especially when you have a small market that people are just learning about and eventually if big money flows come into it, which I would personally think is going to happen, you know, at some point, sure, I would expect it to turn into a bubble, although I, I feel like we're well away from that. That's pretty far off in the future. Because when you think about it, a lot of it comes down to really the view, well, there's other uses of Bitcoins, but I think what a lot of people have been using it as is a proxy of the, the paper currencies. So one way of thinking about it, if you believe that the dollar and the euro and all the other fiat currencies are in good shape, going to be around for a while, then maybe you don't want to invest in Bitcoin. But if you feel similarly that I do that this whole thing is living on borrowed time and we're nearing a break in some of these paper currencies and debt assets that I would argue or the, I would argue that those are the bubble and when they collapse things like bitcoin gold and silver will be what people use as money and will rise so if you have, let's call it 1%, let's, let's say for a second, 1% of the world's population owned a Bitcoin, which again, I think it's much less than that. But if now that's what people are using as currency, just imagine now you have billions of people around the planet piling in, and then I think you would see a, quite a stunning rise. I'm not going to put any numbers on it because I wouldn't claim to have the the first clue how high it could go, although if you follow Cliff High's web bot, which I've found pretty darn interesting over the past couple months, certainly there's some stunning numbers that some of the Bitcoin experts are, are looking for. And yes, at some point, someday down the road, you would, you would think that it would form into a bubble, although at the anywhere near the current levels. And again, just thinking about how many people have actually adopted the technology and are using it. At this point, I don't think that Bitcoin is a bubble. Rather, <coughs> excuse me, what I think perhaps is another question worth thinking about is why is Bitcoin rising so much right now? And as I've been studying and researching and following what's going on, there, are, there haven't really been too many explanations offered. 
the one that makes the most sense to me would be that this is a sign of people being worried about the currencies, much in the same way that we've talked a lot about gold and silver here and following uh, the housing crisis when the Fed, keep in mind that for the first uh, almost 100 years of the Fed from I think it was 1913 to 2008, the their monetary base, which if you're not familiar with that, just imagine a, a rough approximation of how much money's been printed, went from zero to about 800 billion. Now, following 2008, it went up to 4 trillion. So again, people, we, we always hear that there's a lot of money printing going on, a lot of shady things the banks are doing, yet if you Google uh, Federal Reserve monetary base and pull up one of the charts, You'll see this, I guess we're going in reverse, but imagine if you see the chart going slowly up and then just skyrockets, which given the amount of dollars in circulation, again, that's what I think is the bubble. So I think people often aren't, you know, if someone's not studying economics can lose sight of that, just really the magnitude of the pressure that's been put on these currencies and back in 2011, you saw both gold and silver rising in a similar spike fashion, which is typically what happens when people start getting worried about the money printing. They see governments just borrow, borrow, spend, spend, borrow, spend some more. And then when things collapse, what's the, the response is to borrow and spend at an even faster rate. It's like trying to put out the the fire with a with a tank of gasoline. You know, you're just fanning the flames and making it bigger. So now we fast forward back to today here in 2017, where gold and silver, which again we've discussed on here, and in my opinion, and well, actually I wouldn't say my opinion anymore. We got the trader transcripts where they were bragging about manipulating it. So typically you would have gold and silver rising in this type of environment. But due to the way that gold and silver prices are able to be manipulated through the paper trading, that's been prevented from happening. A little trickier to do that with Bitcoin. So the way I was explaining it to a friend the other day was imagine if your check engine light is broken, which in this situation would be the gold and silver, where there really should be a warning going off. There is a problem. There's something that does need to be addressed. But if that, that indicator isn't working actively, we're not going to see it there. Yet, the best explanation I've found yet of why we're seeing such stunning rises in volatility in the cryptocurrencies is because it's not as easy to do that, which makes me wonder if perhaps we're nearing some sort of break point and hopefully we will see some of the action in gold and silver that gold and silver investors have been waiting for quite a while. As frustrating as it can be to sit there and watch when you've made what I would argue is a very responsible and intelligent trade and you see the price flounder, I wonder if Bitcoin is saying we're close to the break point, which hopefully will free gold and silver and be good news for all of you gold and silver owners. Um, if there's another reason for why Bitcoin has been soaring lately, I'd sure love to hear it. So write it in below and be happy to address that and think about that. And again, I don't claim to know all the answers, although what I feel that I did a good job of in my trading career is just seeing all the opinions out there, always getting as much information as possible, then sorting through what makes sense, what feels right to you, extrapolating your own premises, and then acting on it. So from my standpoint, I actually am uh, transferring some money, looking forward to buying my first Bitcoin later this week. I did buy an Ethereum coin. And by the way, if you're interested in learning more about either of those, uh, Cliff High or Bix Weir, two good uh, YouTube channels that I've been watching a lot of their videos and learning quite a lot about. Uh, really interesting stuff going on. And anyway, so we'll wrap this one up, but just a few things to think about. I know it's a confusing situation. People are have been fed such poor information for so long that it's not always easy to know how to handle these things. And again, 
whether you agree with my premises on gold and silver or Bitcoin, hopefully at least the thought process of how to evaluate these things and a few other things to think about has been helpful. So with that said, uh